move this back, I think. Let me see here. All right, that looks pretty good, actually. Pardon me as I get this set up. I'm going to move this over a little bit. That's pretty good. All right, so I don't know if I can see anything in the chat. We're going we're gonna to get started here in a little bit. I'll see if we get a few people to join us today, and then we'll go from there. Let's see here. All right, that looks pretty good, I think. Let's see, we've got a little bit of glare on this side over there, I think, up there. All right, and I think the video is going to display for me properly. Uh, hopefully, it, it's going to be in reverse, I think, for me. Let me try that. Yep, so it's going to be backwards for me, but I think, hopefully, it should be okay for you out there. Uh, so last, let's see. Last week, I tried to do this on YouTube, and uh, it didn't work. Well, it, the video was, was just fine. <clears throat> uh, but the, I thought the script was going to be backwards for you guys. <laughs> so I, I stopped the video, and I did it on uh, Instagram instead. And I said, all right, well, I will come back this week and do it again. So hopefully this works. I have my trusty blackboard here. I want to close that screen though. Pardon me as I get started. I'm just waiting for people to come in. Uh, see if we get the chat. All right, did that remove my glare? Yes, it did. All right, beautiful. All right, so I can see the chat. So nice to see you everyone there. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat, uh, but I will do my best to stay focused on what I'm doing. <laughs> so rather than uh, looking at a whole bunch of chats uh, as they go through, but do let me know that you understand what I'm saying. So hello, nice to see you all out there. Everyone, yeah, you can let me know where you're from. Uh, if you're from Brazil, we have actually, I think a lot of people from Brazil watching the channel recently. Uh, a lot of people on Instagram as well. Uh, but anyway, so I did this training on uh, Friday, Thursday or Friday, a week ago on Instagram and wanted to do it for everyone here. So hopefully people enjoy this. <clears throat> and if you don't catch it live, you can uh, watch it again. Uh, just watch the replay. All right, uh, so today, make sure we got enough space over here. So I'm gonna see how far, okay, is that about, yeah. Comes about that way. Pro put my parameters over here. All right, I got a lot, a lot of space today. So this is nice, I can do it like with a wide screen over here. I haven't done a live video on Instagram or a live video here on uh, YouTube in a long time, so it's nice to see you guys. If, you would, uh, if you'd also like uh, to help some other people who want to improve, let them know about this live. It's happening right now, uh, and it should be a lot of fun, especially if you've been struggling for a long time and want to improve. Yes, long time, no see. <laughs> yes, it has been a while since I've made this, but uh, again, I wanted to do this live. I thought it would be more fun if I can speak with people and answer any questions people might have. Uh, <clears throat> but I think it should be a good video. All right, well, let's get started. So hello, I am Drew Badger, the English Fluency Guide, and in this video, I thought I would do something live with you all. Uh, and again, I think it's going to be a great opportunity to learn more about how you can actually become a fluent speaker and what you actually don't need to become a fluent speaker. So I know a lot of people really struggle with learning English and they've been trying to get fluent for a long time and we get lots of emails from people who ask, uh, is it still possible for me? I'm over 50 years old or 40 years old or 60 years old, or I don't live in an English speaking country or I don't have someone to practice with. And so in this video, I'd like to tell you that yes, none of those things are necessary. And really there's only one thing that you need to become a fluent speaker. It's really simple. It's the same thing I've been teaching on my channel and to learners for almost 20 years now, but I wanted to make one video that really makes it very clear, gives you a lot of proof, shows you that it is possible so that you really can become a fluent speaker. So I mentioned very quickly the things that you do not need. So these are most of the things that people believe they need. Uh, so they need a live teacher. Make sure this fits on here. So a live teacher or a practice partner. 
There will probably be people in this video watching saying who needs to practice and who would like to be a practice partner. Uh, but you do not need a practice partner to get fluent. I know that seems weird, uh, but I will explain why it's not necessary. Uh, people need to live in some, let's just say, an English-speaking country. So if you need to live in an English-speaking country, many, believe, uh, many people believe you need to live in an English-speaking country. This is not true either. Uh, and so what I'd like to show you with just proof, instead of giving you a, a bunch of uh, theories about learning, uh, is really show you the one thing that you do need. And this is, so none of these things up here, it's just understanding like a native. That's really it. And so I'm going to show you how this works in this video and why you can do it anywhere without anyone there and even if you don't speak. So that if you want to become a fluent speaker and you've been struggling for a while, this video is really going to help you. So understanding like a native, people wonder, how is that possible without translating? How can I learn to do that? Well, the people who watch my videos are typically not beginners. They've been trying to learn English for a while. They know a lot of English. They understand what I'm saying, but often they have trouble maybe remembering the right words in conversations, or they have trouble with their accent or pronunciation, or they confuse grammar rules, that kind of thing. So before I talk about uh, how this works, I want to talk about how people typically learn English uh, and why it doesn't help them get fluent. In fact, it actually stops them from speaking. So the typical way that people learn languages, this is not just for learning English, but this is for learning any language, is you will take, uh, let's say I'm trying to learn Chinese. So if I'm trying to learn Chinese, I, I might begin with my native language of English, uh, and then I try to get some translations or something like that into Chinese. So someone will say a word in Chinese and they will say, okay, that means this word in English. And so logically I understand. So I, I understand a rule, maybe someone explains something to me, but I don't actually, uh, I can't actually use that in a conversation. And really part of that is because I'm not understanding Chinese like a native, I'm trying to understand Chinese like a language student, like a linguist studying a language. So I might understand, okay, in Japanese, for example, the adjective would come before the noun. Uh, but saying that, it's not really very helpful. It doesn't actually help you use things uh, accurately uh, in a conversation. So what I want to show you instead is instead of learning this way, where you're trying to learn something through your native language, and then when you learn this way, you have to think again and translate when you try to speak. So again, that's another reason why it's really difficult to learn this way. Instead of doing this, <coughs> What you really should be doing is understanding like a native. So here's how this works and here's why you can do this anywhere in the world, anytime. Uh, again, even if you have uh, struggled for years to get fluent, it makes it really easy to do this once you start learning the right way. So understanding the language like a native, we begin with some kind of vocabulary in English. So we've got the vocabulary and instead of translating that into your native language, we're going to connect this with some kind of situation. So the situation might be even something very simple. If you think about how a child might learn their native language, uh, <clears throat> especially little kids, they see uh, like, you know, I drop something on my head. What does somebody say when they do that? So the vocabulary, like I drop something on my head, I say, ouch, in English, ah, ouch. Or in Japanese, I would say, ita, ita, itai. Now as a child, if I see someone do that, I'm connecting, okay, this vocabulary, ouch, is what someone might say when they get hurt. And that's really how simple it is. And so at a, at a very basic level, this is how children are beginning uh, to build fluency without actually studying any rules. So a child can't tell you, they can't even read this. They can only understand the situation. That's the only way they're able to learn. Uh, and then uh, when we have this kind of situation, 
Looks like we got a, I'm going to, let's see. Oh, so, so I think someone has to meet me in a little bit or something or, or they wanna watch this later. So I will be recording this uh, and then make it live for people to watch on the channel. Uh, so again, you begin with the vocabulary. So some, you hear some situation or you hear some vocabulary and then you connect that with the situation. And what's happening is, ouch, and you get hurt, all right? So just to compare these two different ways of learning, the first is translating or learning through your native language rather than learning in the language that you're studying, okay? So this is, this is really the big difference, uh, and this is what I call basically uh, the fluency breakthrough. And so when you start learning a language like this, I'm gonna give you more examples about how this works in just a moment. Uh, but this changes everything for how you learn, all right? I'm going to show you how exciting this is uh, because you probably know, ouch, I want to take it to a slightly higher level uh, and hopefully you will start getting the picture. So I thought uh, in the Instagram video that I did, I talked about break because this is a fluency breakthrough. So I wanted to cover the word break, but in this one, I wanted to do something different. So we've got the word Now you've probably heard this word before, creep. But again, when a child hears this word, they're learning it for the first time, they hear the word creep, and what they're trying to do is understand the situation. So what's happening when someone says this word? What are they describing? And so usually it's a slow movement like this. Someone is kind of moving up to you very slowly. I'm creeping towards the camera to creep like that. So when you first hear a word, instead of trying to learn the typical way where you have uh, the word creep, and now we're going to translate that, and then we're going to learn every usage of the word creep, this is not how native speakers learn the language. Native speakers begin with really just kind of hearing one example of something, and they begin making connections with other examples, and this is how they automatically build fluency. So I'm going to show you that right now. So let's say the first time you hear creep, you see a very simple example of someone moving slowly like that. They're creeping on the floor. And then maybe you hear creep up, creep up. Now creep up, you might think, well, someone is like creeping, creeping up to me like I'm creeping up to the camera like that. But you might also hear maybe a more advanced conversation where someone is talking about business and they say, wow, the uh, the prices, prices are really creeping up, or prices are starting to creep up. So that means, what do you think? Probably something moving a little bit slowly. We begin with maybe like a uh, like dollar, and then go to a dollar oh five, a dollar ten, something like that. But prices are slowly moving up. So this is where we have a more kind of figurative idea, something rather than just a literal or uh, like a, a physical motion like that. But usually from these physical ideas, we get more interesting vocabulary. But the point here is that if you're learning it like a native, you're trying to develop your understanding of creep as you get more examples of it. And naturally you develop fluency without saying anything, just by being uh, exposed to more and more examples of something. Does that make sense? Hopefully you guys are understanding this. Uh, click the like button if you understand what I'm saying right now and this makes sense. And I'm gonna give you some more examples, but really what's happening is we've kind of got two things. We've got learning like a native. So you've got the vocabulary and you're connecting that to situations so you understand them without studying rules uh, or without getting some kind of long explanation or a translation about it. The point really, even for me as a teacher, as an educator, I call myself a guide because I don't want to just tell you the answer to something. I don't want to just translate and tell you what something is. So even when my own children, I have two daughters, and when they ask me what a word means, usually I tell them some kind of story or get them to connect that with a situation. And then when they say, oh, now I understand, I know they've got the lesson, all right? So it's the same thing with the people I help. It doesn't matter where you're from. Everybody learns their native language this way. And if you learn English this way too, you will also become a fluent speaker, all right? It's really that simple. So let's continue. Uh, go with uh, maybe a few more examples here. You should be getting the point though. But at each time, so when you first hear the word, maybe you don't, you don't quite understand it. You have kind of a general idea and then you hear it again and you think, oh, okay, that's interesting. It's, it's like some kind of slow movement. This makes sense. 
And let's say we'll do, hey, let's do, let's do something more interesting. Now let me know in the chat if you know what feature creep is, if you've ever heard this expression, especially people in uh, technology. So if you make uh, software, something like that, if you've ever heard of this expression, feature creep, feature creep. Let me know in the comments uh, in the chat right here if you've heard that before. Excellent job, Professor. Thank you very much. Oh, from Morocco. Very nice. Well, thank you. Uh, let me know. No, so if you've not heard this expression before. All right. Now, again, as we're starting to go through this, imagine you are a native speaker, like a young child, maybe not a baby, but, you know, like 10 years old, something, and you hear this. So you've already learned creep. You have a, you have a general idea what it means, and you hear something like feature creep. Someone is talking about software or some program or something, and they say, wow, the, we're experiencing a lot of feature creep, feature creep. So feature creep, you can probably guess, we get a general idea of features, so these are things like uh, particular benefits or things that you can do with some software as an example. But let's just say this is a, a software thing. The first example of the software, very simple. We have maybe like a search bar uh, and then we've got, you know, like a button that clicks like, okay, I want to search here. So over time, the people think, you know, we can improve this software. We can do something better. And slowly they start adding more features. And so we've got where well, we're going to put this other button over here. And maybe we've got this other thing and then this other thing over here. And slowly, just like the creeping up example of the prices over here, it's the same idea. So slowly you're getting a better and stronger understanding of what the word means. And again, this is understanding the language like a native. It's not about translating or trying to understand the language logically. Really, it's about building. It's still a logical foundation, but you start getting more and more examples. And even if you don't speak, you become more comfortable because you feel more confident because you understand the language. Isn't that cool? So we've got creep, the slow motion, slow moving of something, creep up. Now we're, we're moving in a certain direction, like I'm creeping up to the camera right now. I'm getting closer. I'm creeping back a little bit, like creep forward, creep back. Or I might have feature creep, where we begin to get more and more things on the screen and soon people don't know what to do. It's become too confusing. Now this is exactly, if you've probably seen this already, so this would be, we remove all of this stuff here. Just put a search bar with a little button that says search. So this would be Google. Uh, and then we put over here, we've got search and like news and weather and all this other stuff. So this would be Yahoo, Google. So Yahoo is a, uh, it's a really obvious example of feature creep, feature creep. So it's got a lot, of, a lot of things, but it was built up over time. And people don't go to Yahoo to search because it has all this stuff. People go to YouTube or go to Google because it's very simple, all right? So this is feature creep. All right, I'll give you one more example. We'll do, let's see, mission creep. Now. As you understand more and more, just like a young child who's learning English, you should be feeling more confident about the word creep. And there are other uses of it as well. But when you learn like a native, you don't start with one usage and then we go to something else. You really learn one of them at a time. You really feel confident about those. And then you start expanding into other uses. And it's a natural process. But what I'm doing right here is I'm systematizing it so that you can get all of this learning incredibly fast. So in maybe five minutes, 10 minutes, you could go through a bunch of things, feel very confident about creep, and a native speaker would not learn this. Maybe it would take them a year to do this because they would be getting one example here or another example some other time, something like that. Does this make sense? Hopefully you guys are understanding this because it's incredibly important. And if you just understand this one idea, you really can become a fluent speaker very quickly. All right, so this solves all the problems. And let's see if anybody understands any idea what mission creep is. So as we've gone through these different examples, mission creep, any ideas? You can put them in the chat if you have any ideas about that. But it's basically the same idea as feature creep. So a mission creep, usually this comes from companies or organizations, <coughs> excuse me, 
where uh, they begin just like these examples over here. So they begin with a particular mission, like my company wants to help save lost kittens or something like that. So I want to find kittens on the street and help return them to their owners. That's the mission, that's my goal, that's the thing I want to do. But over time, you've got that creep, you've got more people or more ideas or more missions that people want to do. So we begin with one thing, okay, this is our job, we're gonna do this. The one mission, the one thing. But over time, okay, well, let's do this thing also. And this thing, and this thing. And over time, because you have mission creep, people don't really get very good at doing all these different things. And usually the, the company or the organization gets worse at doing what it does. But if you focus on one thing, and you understand that, and that's your mission, you don't have this problem, okay? So we begin with creep, creep up, feature creep, mission creep. And this is how natives are learning English. So they're not getting translations, because what would they translate with? That's their native language. The only way they can learn is by getting understandable messages. And if you learn English this way, you will get fluent in English too, all right? Now, what's really exciting about this is, again, you don't need to be in an English-speaking country to do this. Being in an English-speaking country is not the secret to fluency. And I know this because when I came to Japan, where I live now, I spent almost a year trying to learn Japanese, and I was in Japan, surrounded by Japanese people, and I still couldn't speak. And the reason I couldn't speak is because I was still learning the traditional way. I'm surrounded by all these Japanese people, but I'm still using textbooks and translations, getting explanations for things that logically I understand. I say, okay, all right, the adjective comes before the noun in Japanese, that makes sense. But I'm not speaking, I don't understand. And so when I started learning this way, that's when everything changed. So I stopped learning the traditional when I just started understanding the same way natives are understanding. Now, I got this understanding or the kind of insight, the, uh, the breakthrough that I call the fluency breakthrough, while I was walking through a park and thinking about why I was struggling to speak, and I saw little kids playing with their parents. And I said, well, I'm a, I'm a smart guy. I mean, I'm not a genius, but I'm, I had a philosophy degree, <laughs> you know. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a dummy. You know, I'm okay. But I'm looking at these kids, and I think I should be able to do that. These kids are two years old, three years old. They can't read or write, but they're becoming better speakers than I am. <laughs> and so I said, there must be something here. What are they doing that I am not doing? And so I was doing everything else that they were not doing. So I was trying to listen to listening practice CDs, get translations, and really the biggest problem was I was learning Japanese through English, all right? And so when you start learning, you start seeing how this works, there, there are these two really important pieces of understanding like a native. And when you get these, again, you don't need to have a live teacher, you don't need to be in an English-speaking country, you don't need to have a practice partner because it's not about repeating words. I don't get into a conversation and I say the word creep again and again. That's not how I build fluency. I build fluency by really, really understanding what something means because the understanding leads to confidence and that's when I actually feel confident about speaking. So I often hear advice uh, from teachers. They say, well, go out and uh, start speaking even if you don't feel confident or even if you're going to make mistakes. Well, this might be good for a few people who have a uh, really, really uh, strong confidence or a lot of courage, but I think for most people, you know, even myself included, we would like to just understand the language before getting out and trying to use it and, you know, make mistakes in front of other people. Now, obviously, there are going to be some times where we maybe mispronounce a word or something like that, but in general, if you're learning like a native, if you're understanding the language like a native, each time you hear a new word or a new phrase, it deepens your understanding and it makes you feel more confident about speaking. All right? Now, I want to make sure I'm not going too quickly. Uh, let me know if this makes sense. Post something in the chat if, this, if you understand what I'm saying and you understand the, uh, just the importance of understanding like a native. Does this make sense? Because I really, like, this is the thing that changed uh, everything for me when I was trying to learn Japanese. So I had already been struggling for many years to learn different languages. I failed to learn Latin. 
and then uh, French in high school, then Spanish in college, and then even in Japan, as I mentioned, uh, I still couldn't speak. And it's because I was learning all these different languages or trying to learn them uh, in different ways. Uh, but now, ちょっと日本語使いますけどね。あの、多分みんなそれ聞きたいかもしれない。もう多分日本語わからないけど、あの、今すごく自由な感じですね。もうどこでも行ける。もう誰でもと。もう喋れるですね。もう奥さんはち
Now people do this because that's just how we prepare you for tests. And if you need to remember some information, that's all you need to do, then this is perfectly fine to learn something through your native language. But remember, as I explained earlier, if you learn through your native language, you will think through your native language when you speak, okay? So if I go to, let's say I'm gonna watch like uh, a Brazilian teacher teaching English uh, through Portuguese. And he's gonna say, okay, well, like, this is the word for arm or this is the word for back or something like that. Logically, I understand what they're saying, but it's not going to help me speak because when I get into a conversation, I'll be thinking in Portuguese and then translating in my head, all right? Now, if you want to think about rules or try to organize sentences in your head before you speak, that's a good way to learn. So this is, again, really the lowest way of learning a language because you're, you're getting the information, but it's not really helping you speak. Now, the second thing you can do, uh, higher level, is actually learning English in English. So learn English in English. But, and here's the important thing, but, big but, so there's no naturally varied review. Now, I, I pardon, <laughs> I apologize, uh, my writing is not so good. So learning English in English, but there's no naturally varied review. So an example of this, I say, okay, today class we're going to learn, uh, like I give you the word creep again. So I give you the word creep, uh, here's a definition of the word, I give you the definition in, in English. Creep means to like move very you know, slowly, something like that. And then maybe I give you an example sentence. So you get the, you get the word or phrase, you get a definition, uh, you get an example sentence, and then basically that's the whole lesson. And then, okay, now we're gonna move on to the next word. So we're gonna learn uh, draw. And now we're gonna learn uh, study. And we're, we're just gonna go through the vocabulary like that. So when you learn English in English, that's fantastic. The problem is if you don't get the review you need. And this is why I gave the example, we've got all these different uses of creep, and that's even just one way of getting naturally varied review. Another way is by hearing different people say the same word or phrase. So when you're learning, remember how natives are getting fluent in their native language. As my two daughters are growing up, they get to hear me say things, they hear their mother say things, they hear other friends, they hear, hear it in English and Japanese, and that's why they're getting fluent in both of those languages, all right? It's not a mystery. It's not like some kids are good at learning and other kids are not. Basically, everybody learns to speak their native language because that's how they're learning, all right? So learning English in English is fantastic, but it's not the whole story, and this is why you see uh, lots of people that are like, I just spent 20 hours watching YouTube videos. It's like, well, of course, you didn't review anything. The teacher didn't give you like more and more examples. That's why I'm spending like, you know, 20 minutes talking about the word creep. <laughs> because this is how natives learn. It's just they, I'm going to take, you know, they would learn, you know, when they're one year old or two years old, they would have one example of creep and then they would have another example of creep when they're three or four years old, they would hear things. Now, some things you hear really often, like wash your hands. My, my daughters hear that, like they come home from school, hey, wash your hands. They, before dinner, wash your hands, okay? They're hearing all these different examples, all right? And so when you're learning, this is the highest level, this is the best thing you can do to get fluent because this is how natives are learning the language, all right? Does that make sense? All right. So you're right, I learned a lot just listening to my kids. Yeah, and so again, if you're, if you're connecting the vocabulary with the situation, this is, this is the most exciting thing about learning. You actually feel it happening. You feel yourself improving. You feel yourself, ah, I'm actually developing fluency. It's a feeling you have as you improve. As you get more and more examples of something, that's how you really feel strongly about the vocabulary, you really understand it. So people give you even new uh, uses of it. I'll give you an example of that. Uh, so the word in Japanese, I hate to give you a translation, but since you might not know Japanese, the word for head in Japanese is atama. And so I know that word and I understand that word very well. And so when I was in a conversation with uh, my accountant out here, this Japanese, lovely Japanese woman who's uh, been my accountant for a while, uh, she, uh, 
she said to me, like, can we meet next month, like, at, like, the head of the month? And I thought, like, I understood what she meant. I'd never heard that expression before, like using in Japanese, like the head of the month. And I thought, oh my goodness, wow. Like I just, I understood that new thing and now I added that to my vocabulary, I deepened that. Let's see, I don't know why the, like the chat disappears. I don't know if it's possible to go back and, oh, okay, I can look at the chat. All right, that's interesting. I was a babysitter during a year in the States and I learned from my host American family it was natural, you're right. All right. Now, the important thing here is that you don't need to be in an English-speaking country to do this. You don't need to have a native friend uh, and even, you know, watching TV shows, that kind of thing is great. But really, the best thing you can get, so this highest level here, is what I'm doing right here. So you're learning like a native, you're getting the information all in English, and you're getting naturally varied reviews. So I'm continuing to give you more and more examples. And even if you don't speak, I'm not sitting in the room with you. You can watch this video anytime you like. You don't have to be, you know, like my friend and talking to me on the phone all the time. With just a few examples of this, you already feel more confident. So if I could give you every day a little bit more maybe about this word or other words or teach you about conversations or whatever. If I could help you understand like a native every day, wouldn't you become a fluent speaker? Let me know in the chat. So the last thing here, so we've got number, number one uh, is this way. So this is what is called this number one, understanding like a native. So it's not a, uh, a thing that happens one time where you just learn something and you don't review it. It's a process of building fluency, and this is why really a lot of people struggle to speak. They know a lot of English, and they can understand things, but they have trouble expressing themselves because really they just haven't gotten the naturally varied reviews. So they don't really feel very confident about using things. This is why they speak simply, or they kind of have uh, maybe odd things about the way they speak. They sound unnatural, or they use the wrong words, other things like that. But again, it's because, you're not getting the review. The review is the most important part, all right? Anybody can open a dictionary and find lots of words. The vocabulary is not the problem. <laughs> the problem is how do you review and get that information even if you don't have a practice partner or you don't have a live teacher or whatever, all right? And so this is how you get it. You can get this all by yourself and if you're going through these examples, you should already be feeling more fluent about this. Now, the reason I give you not only these examples, just to understand how this works, uh, the mind gets bored easily. So if I just have a flash card and it has the word creep written on it, uh, and I just review that again and again, creep, 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 I'm going to forget the word. And it takes a lot of energy to try to put that in my mind. But if I can naturally get different examples, then my mind is never bored because I'm always learning something new, even though it's about the same word, all right? So this is how you learn like a native and you understand like a native, so you think like a native, and that's how you speak like a native, all right? And so you don't need to be like, uh, you don't need to be in an English-speaking country in order to do this, as long as you're getting this input. Now, the best thing you can do is like the movie The Matrix. You know, they'd like take a wire or something and like, ah, plug it into the back of your head and just, you know, you magically know the language. If I could give you that, I would. But I can't at the moment. Maybe we'll figure that out in the future. But I can give you this, all right? And so if you're learning this way, you will become a fluent speaker, guaranteed. This is how you became fluent in your native language, and all you have to do is learn English the same way. All right, now let me see if anybody has any questions about what I've uh, done so far. All right, but one needs to have opportunities to use and speak those words, right? No, not, no, not at all. All right, so this is another thing. Uh, people think they need to speak in order to use the vocabulary and develop fluency, but research has proved that uh, the fluency actually comes, again, from understanding the language. When you understand something really well, you can start speaking about it whenever you have the opportunity. The practice is not repeating things that you've heard. The practice is getting all these different examples. This is the practice. So the practice is not going out and, and speaking and repeating things. It's getting more and more examples until, until you feel so confident that the words just come out naturally. All right? 
Yes, it would be nice to learn like the Matrix. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we will come uh, come to that in the future. As a, as a tour guide, I develop my German language with German speaking guests. Yes, and so this is another thing I recommend also, like for people who want to. It's okay to to speak. It's it's like a good thing that people want to do that and get out and use the language. But I'm showing you here, proving that it's not necessary. So you don't have to learn this way, and you don't have to wait for an English speaker to be there or a native teacher or anybody like that in order for you to improve. All you need is to get this. You need someone in some way to give you this information and really that's really just getting the, the understanding, helping you understand like a native. So not just giving you definitions like you're looking in a dictionary or something like that, really helping you understand the language. And then getting lots of examples and that's it. And that's all you need to become a fluent speaker. Isn't that cool? All right, let's see here. We'll go back and see if anybody, let's see. So Jason Bourne, yeah, I think I already got that already. Wow, Jason Bourne is watching this video, amazing. Uh, how many languages can you speak, sir? I only speak uh, English and Japanese, but I know some Spanish and, uh, and, uh, and French. I remember a little bit of French uh, and even some Latin <laughs> that I learned when I was in elementary school. But Japanese and English are the only languages I speak fluently because they are the only languages uh, that I learned this way. All right, let's see. Recently I learned the word music. Face to music, for example, this is totally different from meaning a radio. Can you please explain shortly? All right, so again, when you're learning like a native, this is how we, we learn something. So a, a native child would ask the exact same question. So they begin... They begin with a word like music, and they have a very, a very specific understanding of that. They hear some, someone playing the piano, and, and their parents say, oh, that's music. And the child thinks, okay, music, what, is that, what does that mean? And so then they hear you know, someone playing the trumpet, and then they hear someone playing the drums, or like a band on the radio, or something like that, or a symphony. And they're connecting all these things, and like, ah, okay, that means music. That means music. And now, as you, as you, again, hear more and more examples of that, sometimes you hear things that are just like a, like a really random word or you don't understand why they're doing something like that. But typically, to face the music, to face the music, you have to, again, not just, not just try to learn the phrase by itself, but again, you want to connect the vocabulary to the situation. So let's say... Uh, my younger daughter, Noel, is, at, is in you know, the house or whatever, and I say, Noel, be good. Uh, I have to go out to uh, get some milk or something, and I'll be back in five minutes. So don't do anything uh, stupid. Don't break anything. And when I come back, I see there's a, like a broken glass on the floor. And I say, Noel, and I can't find her. And I know she's hiding around the house somewhere. And so Noel knows that she's in trouble. She's going to have to face the music when I come and find her. And so I try to be very kind when I find her. I say, it's okay if you broke the dish or whatever. Uh, but to face the music in that way, without trying to think about like, why is the word music in there? We still want to just connect the vocabulary with the situation. And so it just means like face the consequences or to accept responsibility for something uh, or to you know, when, when, again, like the example of Noel having to, uh, having to show herself after she's hidden because she did something bad. And I'm not angry at her because she broke a dish, but I just say, okay, like, you know, let's clean this up. Now we have to deal with this thing. So that's to face the music. Like if you didn't pass or you didn't uh, study well for your test, now it's test day. It's time to face the music. All right, so we have to like listen to something, you know, kind of you can think about it in that way. Like to face something means to confront that thing, to encounter that thing. And that's where you get the idea of facing the music. Now you can understand that even natives in conversations will be like, well, why do we put the word music in there? Why is that even a thing? There are lots of expressions or uh, phrases, even words that sound weird, like we wouldn't do that. And this is why natives usually understand things as a single unit and they might find a connection there, but typically it's, you know, there, there might be like an origin of someone having to like face some music in a way, but people typically don't think about it that way uh, for things like this. So in this case, to face the music, again, 
you've done something and now you have to deal with it like you uh, didn't study well or you broke something or whatever now you have to face the consequences of that you have to deal with whatever you created to face the music all right hopefully that makes sense uh, but the idea is in some cases it will not always be like perfectly clear so another example like creepy now creepy is basically a different meaning from the word creep even though you could call a person a creep like that person is a creep now I didn't want to give we cover these different examples because typically natives you know they might learn one thing it's almost like a track of meaning so you might have like creep creep on creep over feature creep mission creep we're going to go through these different examples and then there's a different usage over here where someone is like a little bit weird oh that guy is creepy that guy is creeping me out it makes me like feel feel weird like little bugs a little creepy crawly and you hear all of these different examples, and it's not about trying to, trying to learn one specific thing. You're, you're still thinking like a native when you, when you try to, try to like hold the word down and really understand what it means uh, in a specific way. It's more about getting this general sense for how these different things connect to each other. And even if there's no obvious connection, uh, you're still understanding the vocabulary from the situation, not from your native language. All right? That was kind of a long explanation, but sometimes it's better to get a long story and hear how things are connected together rather than just get a quick definition. Like you can just put this in Google and it'll tell you what it means. But to really have a, uh, a situation where, ah, okay, like I didn't study for the test and now I know the teacher is going to be mad at me or I didn't practice my speech and I'm standing in front of the whole room and now it's time to face the music. I didn't practice. I wasn't prepared. All right, face the music. All right, let's see if we have any other questions about this. Uh, so the main objective is to get fluent. That makes sense. Well, fluency is, a, is like a, basically a, a result of understanding like a native. So if you don't understand like a native, you can't speak because you're thinking about rules and you can't, you can't actually communicate naturally and have the, word, the words come out without you thinking about everything or translating in your head first. So the people watching my videos, it's usually, mostly, I, I would guess, uh, there's going to be some teachers, but mostly English learners who want to communicate without thinking and translating in their head. So this is the same thing I wanted in Japanese. I came to Japan and wanted to learn how to communicate, how to speak with people in Japanese without thinking and organizing sentences in my head. And so once I started learning this way, so I, I gave this example when I recorded this for Instagram last week, I talked about, again, these, these same two things. I'm learning like a native and I'm getting naturally varied review. So I was sitting, this is when I, when I first discovered this. So I see these kids at the park and I say, what are they doing that I'm not doing? And the thing they're doing is, is understanding the language like a native while I'm trying to think and translate and understand it like a student, all right? So I said, all right, I can start just getting lots of examples of native situations and I'll improve automatically. And that's what happened. And as an example, I'll just give you one right now. So I went to, uh, and I, I did this many times and I still do it today automatically, but I went to a coffee shop. So I was sitting at a coffee shop and the situation is, people ordering food, people ordering drinks or whatever. So you have a line of people coming up, you have the counter here, and you have the staff working behind the counter and the cash registers. I got a table pretty close to the counter. So I could sit and listen to all these people walk up and order food, all right? So the situation is I'd like to order something, all right? Now if you do this in English, at an English cafe, you're going to hear kind of a range of things, you know. There will be a few different things like may I have, or may I have something. Or you might hear I'd like, something like that. Or you might hear uh, like a kind of very casual can I get a something. So like young, young kids, a, a teenager might say like, can I get a, can I get a, 
And if you're a, a non-native speaker and you hear that, it sounds really fast. It's like, it's like a ki, na, like na, ged. <laughs> Think about that. As a non-native speaker, you just hear that. You don't really understand what people are saying. That's said, can I, can I get your number? Can I get your, your number? Yeah, can I get your number? So if you're talking to someone, uh, can I get a, this is a very, a very informal, very quick way of ordering something as a, like a kid would do it. But usually if you go to like a, a coffee shop, so this a coffee shop is one situation. A different situation would be a fancy restaurant. So usually you have maybe like wealthier people or they're speaking a little bit better or nicely or using better English, that kind of thing. So you will have a different set of vocabulary. And natives are learning this. They're building on this every day. So rather than learning, here's one phrase to use when you get to a coffee shop or whatever, you learn a bunch of phrases and, and slowly you figure out, okay, a lot of people are using this, many people are using this one, a couple of people use this thing other, other than that, you know. So when, you, when you're in that situation, like if you are working at a coffee shop, you will hear all those things. And so you will feel very confident about uh, responding to them. But uh, as an example, if you are going to take a job working at a coffee shop, and I have students who follow my lessons who do do that, uh, it's better for them to get a bunch of examples first. Spend some time at the coffee shop, just sit and listen. If you feel uncomfortable about responding to what people might say, just even you know, an hour or two of listening to people come up and order things, you will get very good very quickly, and you will feel very confident about that. And the whole language works the same way. So if you're getting vocabulary, connecting that with a situation, and then getting lots of examples, that's how you get fluent automatically. All right? All right. <clears throat> Let's see here. I'm going to go back and see if... All right. Got a couple of... So how to flow in writer want us to feel? How to flow in what writer want us to feel about? I don't understand what that means. Let me rephrase that if you can. <clears throat> Do you think it's better to study English in a country that speaks English? Yeah, I think you can certainly uh, speak English or learn English in an English-speaking country, but it's not necessary to do that. And again, there are people who have lived, many of the people who, who find me, uh, they find me because they've been living in England or the United States or Canada or Australia for many years and they still can't speak, all right? So it's not about getting like, a, like, a, like a low basic level of understanding or knowing a lot of vocabulary. It's about, again, connecting things, understanding, and building that understanding over time. <clears throat> and you can do this without being in an English-speaking country. So it's nice. I mean, I could learn Japanese the same way. And actually, for my, for my history of learning Japanese, I came to Japan in 2003, and I struggled for most of that first year until I discovered this. Uh, and then I was in Japan for about uh, a year and about two years after that. So I was continuing to improve, <clears throat> excuse me again, uh, and then I went back to the United States and lived in America for two or three years. Uh, about two, yeah, two and a half years, I think, before coming back to Japan. But in that time while I was in America, I was still improving my Japanese the same way. So I was getting like the input, getting, getting lots of examples, and I did meet Japanese people that I could speak with, uh, but the important thing was me understanding the language really well. So it's not about repeating phrases, like I learn a phrase and I repeat it, it's like I don't really understand, maybe the first time I hear something, I can kind of hear it. So watching, uh, even my uh, daughters will watch some Japanese TV shows, and some words I don't understand. So I hear, I'm like, what is that word? But as soon as I read maybe the subtitles, I finally understand, ah, okay, I understand what they're talking about. I understand what the words are, and now it becomes clear. I gave this example in uh, that last video as well uh, on Instagram where I was talking about the gorilla experiment. <laughs> and so this is a, uh, this is a bunch of people uh, passing basketballs back and forth to each other in a group, and uh, the, you, the people watching this, they, they had to watch a video of people passing a basketball around. It's just a group of people passing the basketball, and you have to count how many times they pass the basketball. And after that, they say, okay, how many times was, was the basketball passed? 
and the people would say 20 times or 30 times or whatever. And then the people doing this, it was just a, basically a psychology or a science study. They would say, did you see the gorilla? And the people, most people watching it say, what gorilla? I don't know, what do you mean see a gorilla? I was counting you know, people passing a basketball. And so what happened in this is it's just an interesting part of you know, human, the way the mind works when we're looking at something like trying to count how many times a basketball is passed, we don't notice lots of other things. And so if we aren't prepared for something, there was a gorilla that, yeah, you, pre if you can watch that video on YouTube. But so the, the gorilla just kind of walks, you know, he walks like right through the scene. It's a person in a gorilla suit and he waves <laughs> and he keeps on walking. And most people just don't see it. And so if you're unprepared for something, if I tell you beforehand, hey, there's going to be a gorilla in this video, you will absolutely see the gorilla. All right. But if you don't know about the gorilla and a lot of vocabulary is that way, if you're not prepared for something, then of course it will be surprising and you probably will not notice. But one thing you will notice like over time, and this is why we return to phrases and words again and again with that naturally varied review, because over time you think, ah, like I heard that before. But all I do is I just systematize it so you get the, you get the review much faster than you would naturally. So if you, you're learning like a native speaker, uh, even natives, they have a long time often uh, between each time they hear some kind of vocabulary. So a young child might hear some random word and then they might not hear that word again for two years. And so they hear it, maybe they forget the word and they hear it again and they think, oh, maybe I remember that word, I think. And so that's basically how you would be learning the language. That's how you learned your native language. And it's just an interesting thing about like how the mind works, uh, that you would be getting kind of one example and, and, and even just that one thing, if you're focusing on that or if you're not prepared for that, then you won't even hear it. Now what's interesting is like, you will probably watch movies as you, when you're watching movies as a young child uh, and you, you look at like who the main actor or the main character is, when you get older, it's interesting to go back and watch the movies that you saw as a child and you think, oh, look, that actor was in that movie. So you weren't paying attention to any other actors or anybody else at all, but you will go back to watch a movie and you will think, oh, yeah, look, that same actor was in there. You just weren't thinking about that. You didn't notice it. You weren't prepared for that. So vocabulary works the same way, and that's why you need the review. Okay? Does that make sense? All right, let's go back and see here. Was someone, let's see, you got a, like a box of some Chinese food or something. <laughs> All right, hello, Drew. I'm a big fan and learn, uh, let's see, a lot by watching your videos. You're great. Well, thank you very much. All right, hi, DJ. Uh, I'm a cat from Guatemala. Thank you. Wow, a cat watching this. Amazing. Ah, Catalino. A uh, cat from Guatemala, thank you for all you do so we can speak the English language. You're, uh, yeah, glad to hear. It's my pleasure. I, I like to help people improve because I struggled for so many years to get fluent. That's why I do what I do. Whenever I read an English book, I didn't feel the situation. I feel like I'm just reading English. But while reading my native language, it feels like the writer's feeling, how to get that ability. So again, great question. That's exactly what this is. The more you can learn like a native, the more you understand like a native, the more like the book or whatever. I, I have the same thing, the same experience. You know, when I'm first starting to read Japanese, it just it's just words on a page. I don't see a picture of anything or really like like get a feeling from that because I'm spending so much time trying to understand what words mean. But as I improve, so my speaking, I, I have really the opposite problem that most learners do. My speaking is way better than my ability to read and write uh, Japanese. And so I, like if I can't, I, I can, my, and I, my, uh, my writing is the worst <laughs> because it's, you know, writing Japanese characters that I, I just don't know. So speaking is the best, reading is next best, and then writing is the worst skill for me. Uh, but when I'm, uh, it, it was the same thing in conversations before. It works the same whether you're reading or whether you're speaking, but you get into the flow, just like I'm in the flow of speaking right now. So I could switch into Japanese if, if more people understood Japanese, I could. Uh, but I will be, like, in my daily life, that's how I speak. So I could be talking to one person in English and then turn to somebody else and start speaking Japanese to that person. And I'm not translating in my head when I do that. All right, and it's because I just get this. 
So I'm not trying to study the language. I'm trying to get more examples of the language. All right? So I hear an interesting word, it's like, ah. Oh. Or I hear like an interesting, uh, or I read an interesting kanji. So like the kanji is the same thing. Uh, this is the written characters that came from Chinese in Japanese. Uh, and so when I, I learn one of those, it's like, oh, okay, like here's an interesting kanji and here's like a connection to this thing or that thing or something like that. So you can, for example, for Japanese, like a young, like my daughter now is learning uh, like the first year words or first year characters. So this is ki, like the, the Japanese or Chinese character for tree. Now it's interesting, you like put that like one over here Okay, we're gonna put this here. And now we got like three of these over here and this becomes uh, like a forest. <laughs> you know, some, some things are visual and you can understand them like that. But it's interesting you begin making the connection like, oh, look at that, oh, look at that. It's the same one and we've got more of them. I wonder what that means. And that's where again, you're the job of an English fluency guide, what I do differently from a teacher is I'm trying to help you understand the language like a native rather than just tell you something. Imagine if you and I are watching a movie and, uh, and I just say, oh, look, like I know the answer to that. I know what's going to happen. You would get angry at me because I'm stopping you from having the ability to understand the movie by yourself. You want that chance to solve the problem or to understand the riddle or whatever uh, the same way. All right. All right, Let's see if we got some more questions over here. I've been going for an hour. All right, over here. I think uh, this secret is repetition, many repetitions. All right, so Adriano makes a point about repetition. Repetition. Repetition, 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 repetition. I want to be very clear about this because a lot of people think, yes, you just need to repeat something. So if I put the word creep up here, again, maybe you're joining late, but... Uh, the word creep, so we, we covered that earlier in the video. I will make sure this video is live so people can watch it when it's available. Uh, but if you just repeat the word again and again, you're not really deepening your understanding of it. You're not really understanding or preparing yourself for different ways the phrase might be used in everyday life. All right. So repetition by itself is not really going to help you. Repetition by itself is not going to help you. And this is why another reason for that is because your mind gets very, very bored with it. All right? If you see the same thing again and again, it's very, very boring, especially for adults. Like little kids, they can watch the same movie over and over again, usually because they're learning a little bit more each time they do. Uh, but adults get tired and, you know, we, we don't want to sit and listen to the same thing over and over again. Maybe some movies we really like, but uh, for most things, uh, they don't do that. Uh, so the repetition of it, the, the just repeating something by itself is not what, what gets you fluent because it's not improving your understanding and because it's boring to you. Some people might not be bored, but most people are. This is a big problem people have with learning things like this. And this is why natives get naturally very Review. So it is the review. You're correct. The review, the, but it's not repetition. It's getting many, many different examples of the same or similar thing. So even hearing a word like this, like your father says the word, your mother says the word, your grandmother says the word, your teacher, your friend, you might hear this from lots of different people. And as you hear that, you develop your own listening and pronunciation automatically even if you don't say anything. Again, you're, you're like, you're, like who you are as a person and how you speak is really the influence of all these other people around you. So if you hear like pronunciation like this, this is why like Spanish speakers sound like Spanish speakers, English speakers sound like English speakers, all right? So they're getting those influences from the people around them. And if you want to speak English, you want to change the way you speak, you have to get the same kind of thing. So it's not just repeating stuff or even you repeating something again and again. It's you deepening your understanding. I'll write this over here, make sure it's very clear. So understanding leads to confidence, which leads to speech. 
Speaking is the result of understanding like this. All right, so this is like what's actually happening. What people think is happening is they begin by speaking. Now, this is a big question mark for most people, but this is how they think it's happening. So people think, okay, if I keep speaking and speaking and speaking, I will get fluent. And so that's why people give the advice of, well, go out, just keep speaking, keep talking to people. Okay, well, I'm nervous. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm worried about uh, maybe making a, a grammar mistake or whatever. And so it's, uh, as a teacher, you can't just tell people like, well, just do it anyway. <laughs> like, uh, that's stupid advice. You have to understand how people are really thinking. And it's much better to prepare people for things if you can, if that's possible, and it is possible like this. So people think like, okay, I'm gonna speak and then I get fluent. But it, like, it doesn't really happen like this. This is how it's actually happening. Now you could be speaking while you're doing this. You could be doing this in conversations. Uh, but the, the thing that's actually getting you fluent is the understanding. The more you understand like a native, the more you speak like one. It's not about repeating phrases, all right? It's the first time that I'm here in this channel. Welcome, Lucy. Nice to see you there. All right, so hello, Lucy, can you talk to me? I'm so very grateful, learning so many things, glad to hear. So learning in a systematic way, listening, Android practicing as much as possible. Yeah, it's, again, it's very simple. Understanding like a native, that's really all you need to do. All right, so what about getting lost while speaking? Yes, most people, they, they get lost because they're trying to think about translations and grammar rules uh, rather than actually uh, being able to express themselves and stay in the flow of the conversation. Now, I could talk, like just keep talking and talking in Japanese about lots of different things, uh, even uh, things I, I don't know very well because I can usually connect those to things that I do know, uh, but again, it's because I understand the language like a native and I continue to learn the language and I continue to improve again and again uh, every day as I'm, again, learning more like a native. That's really that simple. All right, so hello, teacher. Your videos are amazing. Uh, thank you. Here's the question. How can I improve talking without a person to talk with? All right, so this is, this is like the main question that all this answers, all right? Now, if, who, let me know. Just like raise your hand or just say yes if you feel more confident watching this video. Just let me know in the, in the chat right here. Do you feel more confident right now, especially if you, you've been watching for a while, do you feel more confident about speaking, uh, like, or even using the word creep? Do you feel a bit more confident now than you did like at the beginning of this video? All right. Now, why do you feel confident? I'm not in the room with you. You didn't say anything to me. I didn't hear you speak. Why do you feel confident? The reason is because you understood like a, like a native. That's it. All right? Does that make sense? So it's not about like, it's not about like having someone to speak with. It's not about having someone to speak with. It's understanding like a native. Now, understanding my voice, that's, that's the beginning of it, so you can actually understand the words that I'm using. Uh, but as I'm teaching, as I'm explaining things, I'm helping you understand the situation the same way a native would. And it's even better if you can see real people in a conversation or you see people in real life doing things, like I drop something on my head and I eat ta, eat ta. So that's in Japanese. Or if I drop something on my head in English, I say, ouch, or ouch, ouch. Ah, you know, depending on how, uh, how like painful it is. But little kids learn these things. And it's amazing if you have little kids in your life, just go to a park if you need to experience this for yourself, if you forgot what it's like to learn. But you'll watch little kids and like a little, a little English kid, if they, or like an English speaking kid, they pick something up and they're saying like, Ugh! Ugh! they make that, like that is a sound, that's an English sound. You come to Japan and like, and a Japanese kid would say like, yo, sh like they're, it's, it's the same situation, but they're actually using different vocabulary for that because they're learning that and they're understanding this is what people say in this situation. It's not about them saying anything. Most kids, they spend a lot of time just being quiet 
just listening, and it's not really about like listening is the secret, it's like listening is a way to understand. You can also watch to understand something. That's why we have all these different senses. I can listen, I can taste something, like it's better for me to just taste a lemon to know what a lemon is than for you to give me an explanation about what a lemon is. All right, it's, it's like that. So when I have uh, like my young children and they, they, I, I could explain to them what hot or what heat is, or I just say touch something hot and you'll know what it is. The more you can connect directly with the language, really the goal is understanding like a native rather than understanding through your native language. All right. Does that make sense? Hopefully this makes sense. All right, people should be, you should be feeling excited about this. You should be thinking, wow, I can get fluent without having someone to practice with. Because fluency doesn't come from you talking to other people. It comes from you getting information and really making the understanding the most important thing. All right? All right, let's see here. Any more? Uh, do, 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 do. All right, but it looks like people people got it. I'm not sure the problem is then people think everybody learn in the same way. I'm not sure the problem is then. I don't know what that means. Hmm. Everybody learn in the same way. So you've got, the basic idea is you have how you learn uh, your native language and then how you learn what people call a second language. There's native language and a second language. Now, I, I don't know who else uh, thinks about this, but I am uh, basically the only person I know of that, that like teaches like this. So I, not, not thinking like a linguist, but actually teaches in this way, um, where I don't, I don't think there is such a thing as a second language. There is no such thing as a second language. It's only learning it like a student. So J Japanese is, is like, a, it's like a first language for me. I, I don't know as much Japanese, obviously, but uh, it's like a first language because I learn it as a first language, okay? I have a video you can check the YouTube channel about there's no such thing uh, as a second language, but I explain this. There's no such thing as a second language. It's just how you learn. If you learn like a native, you will speak like one. If you understand like a native, you will speak like a native, all right? All right, let's see. Could you please give us uh, an advice on how to express ourselves or interact with our kids to fix any disagreement? <laughs> mm, that's, a, a, that's like maybe beyond the scope of this video. I don't know if you're, if you're if this is like uh, family counseling <laughs> advice uh, you're looking for. Uh, but yeah, I mean, every, every family, you know, my wife and I will argue about stuff sometimes or my kids will do stuff. I, I just try to be kind and patient with them and help them understand. That's really all I can do. Interesting and understanding is about 80% of fluency. Listening and understanding is about 80% of fluency. Well, you can, people will argue with me about this and they will say, well, I mean, you still have to get out and use the language. It's like, well, yeah, but you, you would be able to use the language uh, if you understood it well enough. You, feel, you would feel confident about using the language and then you don't have to worry about like practicing it again and again. It's understanding something so well that you can get out and, and talk about it. Now, if I know nothing about how to learn languages, I can't give this video. But I understand language learning so well that I could give this video, I could talk about this all day. So things that I don't know well, I can't speak about. Or I can't speak about them well. I can kind of talk about things, but if you ask me to talk about uh, nuclear physics, for example, I can't speak about that because I don't know much about it. I don't understand it very well. So of course I can't say anything. I might be able to have a conversation and learn something, but it would be difficult for me to talk about that. And it's even talking in my native language. All right. Is this called input? Yeah, comprehensible input. So I want to make it clear. So uh, another thing, so when I was at the park and I discovered this, I wanted to make sure this was not just some crazy idea, and I, this is where I found Dr. Stephen Krashen, who has the same, uh, the same idea about this, because this is how we all learn our native language. This is something parents do automatically when they're teaching their children, because you can't use translations when you teach your children. You can't give them anything to read and write. 
the only thing you can do is make the language understandable. So Dr. Krashen figured that out, I figured that out, lots of people have figured that out. But the difference is Dr. Krashen is a linguist and he didn't really make lessons about how to help people do this. He's more teaching teachers about how to actually uh, be good teachers, how to help kids learn things. And this is why he called this the biggest secret in language learning, the best kept secret in language learning. Because most people are just trying to give you a translation or a definition rather than help you understand like a native. Now, most people are in school. Maybe they have to learn language, uh, or, you know, learn English or whatever for some kind of test. But in, in actual everyday conversation, uh, this is how you learn so you can speak. All right. Let's see. So learn something through a second language. Yes, that's another good example. Have you moved to Japan without knowing uh, anything about Japanese? Yes, when I came to Japan, uh, I, didn't, I didn't speak any Japanese. I can say konnichiwa, but I said it badly. I was like, konnichiwa, you know. <laughs> but now, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a whole new world. But it's because I understand Japanese like a native speaker. I think in Japanese, I understand the language that way, and I learn new things in Japanese, all right? So I'm not, I'm not I, I, sometimes I will review textbooks just to see how people are teaching, and I'm like, why are they doing this? You're just making it more confusing for people. Just help them understand it like a native and give them lots of examples. That's it. All right? That's the, that's the whole magic. And it's so easy. It's, you, you can forget about uh, needing to get a plane ticket to the United States or living in Canada or whatever. All you need to do is understand like a native. Now, if uh, I'm going to like lose my voice if I keep talking. I get excited. I could talk about this all day. But I want to make sure I get, uh, let's see. Could you please give us an advice on how to, oh, okay. So I watched some of your videos before an English interview to feel more prepared and fluent, and it worked. It was a while ago, fantastic. <laughs> it's amazing, I, like, I, I, I started teaching on YouTube because I wanted to help more people learn even if I can't physically be there. So I don't have a, like a school or anything that I teach people personally anymore other than my family or just some random people I meet. Uh, but I really like helping people learn, and that's why I do this. But the important thing is I don't need to be there with you for you to improve. I can make lessons that are understandable and then give you lots of review. So that you, like that is the practice. You just sit back and relax and practice and improve automatically. So when you get into a conversation, you feel much more uh, excited and, uh, and eager to improve. All right? So you don't have to feel nervous. The whole point is to feel... Uh, feel confident because you understand the language so well. All right. Now let's see how to me easily memorize uh, vocabulary, whether passive vocabulary or advanced vocabulary. So those are t different things. Um, this, is how you, this is how you understand vocabulary. So the more you understand vocabulary, like a native, the easier to remember it becomes. Now I have a, an actual program about how to remember any English word that teaches you to think more like a native it's a faster approach, but obviously this is like, this is the number one thing. So everybody wants fast result. But if you can combine those two things, basically learning like a native and doing this technique, uh, it will help you improve uh, your listening and your memory uh, and your fluency, obviously. Yes, Carlos, that is my problem. I watched your video about how, how to know about your live lesson. Um, so I, I don't have like a, a regular schedule for live videos. I haven't made a video on YouTube in a while. They're kind of, uh, it's a pain for me to make them, but I, I like doing live videos because I can just come on and talk with people and explain things. Uh, but most of my, most of my lessons are, it's basically the same lesson is the fluency break, breakthrough. So I'm talking about how to understand like a native so you speak like one. And so as you do this, as you start getting more and more examples of something, you start thinking like a native automatically. So someone's just asking, how do I think more like a native? That's how you do it. So this, this process of understanding like a, like a native, it solves every problem that you have about how to learn, all right? It improves your grammar, your pronunciation, your listening, your confidence, everything. And so you start thinking more like a native, just like when I, when I was in that conversation with my accountant, and she said, like, well, what about, like, the head of, uh, of, like, September or whatever? And I was like, I, it took me a second to think about it. I was like, what? And it's like, ah, I, I understand what she's saying. Because the word atama in Japanese is, like, the same head, like, this head and also the top. 
of like the month. You can talk about like the head or the top of something like that. So it was a new usage, but it strengthened my ability and it helped me think more like a Japanese person. Ah, so that's how Japanese people think about that vocabulary. All right. So how can I speak fast English in sentences uh, and not comes in my mind? Again, if you don't feel confident about the vocabulary, it just means you don't know it very well. The more you know it, the more you can use it without thinking. The more you think like a native, the more you speak like one. All right? So who would like, who would like me to like personally show you how to do this whenever you like? So just let me know, yes, like if you, if you would like me to come to your house <laughs> and work with you every day and like teach you a little bit more like this for the things that you are interested in. If you are interested in that, let me know. Just, just let me know, yes, like if you would like me, you're, you're, you wake up in the middle of the night, it's like four o'clock in the morning and you think, I wanna learn some English, Drew, please teach me about this. If you would like that, let me know. All right, I'll go back and answer some more of these questions. All right, it's hard to learn without moving to another country of people who only talks in English, but thank you and the internet for improving a little more every day. Yeah, it's, you don't need to be in an English speaking country to get people around you or to, to get input from lots of people. Yes, the internet makes that very easy. You just do it in a systematic way, making sure that you're getting lots of uh, input around that specific kind of thing. All right, so let's see, so it's hard, okay. Uh, I hear you often speaking while driving. I downloaded all your podcasts in MP3 format. <laughs> Great. Yeah, so the more you're listening, and, and not even just to me, like for my lessons, I have uh, lots of different native speakers. So you get to hear their different voices, different ways they speak. Uh, let's see. I see you from Merida. Thanks for your live streaming. Oh, well, yeah, glad to hear. Yeah, so the more, the more you're getting uh, the input, and if you could get that every day, if I could teach you like this, like every day we could focus on uh, a new conversation uh, or some new vocabulary and help you review it, get that naturally varied review, you would think more like a native, you would speak like one. Now, if you still think you need anything else, let me know. I'd love to answer that question for you. But ideally, you just need this. That's all you need. All right. So let's see here. Uh, very good question. What uh, can help the most, reading or listening? It's not, it's not about reading or listening or, or watching. It's about understanding something. If you understand something better by reading it, then great. The point is just to get, make sure you get that, uh, get the understanding. And this is why, like, when you're... When you like listen to something, so I or I just watch a TV show, like I'm watching my Japanese, uh, my some Japanese uh, kids show on TV with my daughter, and I hear something. So the first thing I got my ear right here. I hear something and I don't quite understand it. Maybe it's a new word, um, and I don't quite hear it. But as soon as I read it, I think, ah, okay, I understand exactly what they're saying. <laughs> so here is an example where reading. It's not, it's not like better than hearing, but the two work together, all right? And so you want to hear, you want to read, you want to listen, you want to watch, you want to even try maybe teaching something to someone else that shows you really understand it. But this is, again, uh, it's, it's not about like one skill or one activity. You actually do all of these. So when you learn with me, you're going to do a little bit of reading, some writing, some listening, some speaking. Well, actually, maybe no speaking really, but uh, the, the watching and the listening, all of those things are going to come together to help you build fluency automatically. All right? All right, let's see if we go up. The point is you stop translating in your head and just start to absorb the conversation. Let's see. Yeah, so that, basically that's it. So when, you're, when you learn this way, you're, you're, yes, you're naturally absorbing the language the same way a native does, even if you don't speak, okay? You don't speak, you don't need to speak, you're just getting the input as you feel more and more confident about it, you think, wow, I really understand you know, what, uh, what the person is saying, and now I could use that too. I feel confident about using some of it, all right? So I asked uh, if people would like to have me right there with them and actually going through, like, helping them understand, like, thousands, thousands of words and expressions, uh, proverbs, slang, phrasal verbs, all of these different things, and actually going through and helping you, number one, so understanding it like a native, and then number two, 
We're going to give you lots and lots and lots of examples in different ways that naturally varied review so you get fluent automatically. Now, if you would like to do this, you don't need me there physically to do that. You just need the information. Okay? So you don't need to be living at my house. You don't need to be with me 24 hours a day. You just need to get that input whenever it's convenient for you. So maybe on the, uh, like in the car, some people listen to things or they like to watch, you know, at night or something. Uh, what I do is I help you learn English like a native and help you understand it like a native wherever you are. Without you needing to speak, without you needing a practice partner, you automatically get fluent, guaranteed, if you just follow this. So you don't need to live in an English-speaking country, you don't need a practice partner, you don't need to go uh, traveling around or find people or do a lot of speaking practice on your own. It's just making sure you really, really understand like a native. Because when you feel confident, because you understand, that's when you speak. Okay, speaking is the result of language learning. It's not how you get to fluency, all right? Speaking is like, it's like the last part when you really feel confident about what you're using, all right? All right, so if, let's say, I think we have some people who would like to be do that. Do you think uh, reading aloud improves fluency, speaking? What do you recommend to improve speaking? The point is, oh, okay. Uh, so yeah, sure. Reading, reading aloud can help. It's just another, it's another way of, of getting that review. But the, the point is, if you don't really understand something first, then saying it over and over won't help you understand it. Understanding doesn't come from repeating things again and again. It comes from understanding. You need that, that aha moment. Like, ah, I understand what they're saying. I understand what they mean. All right? If I just start speaking some Japanese, like you could repeat after me, but you wouldn't get fluent in Japanese. I still remember the exercise you once proposed a practice speaking. It was about a pen, talking about a pen, it works. Yeah, so you can use like the, again, if you understand things, you're, you're using your, your ability to speak. The goal is to speak, but I'm saying you don't have to start there. And if you don't start there, that's great because you don't feel nervous and you don't need a practice partner. You really just need a lot of the input. That's really the thing that most people are missing. And uh, all the people watching this, like you probably know a lot of vocabulary already. You can understand what I'm saying, but you're just not at that level where you can really feel confident expressing yourself because you don't really know it like a native does. But the more you review, the more you actually get fluent. All right. All right, let's see here. The aha moment, yes. All right, I live in a Spanish uh, country, but I create my artificial English context. Yep, so that's something people do. I live every day in English. I don't feel like studying. I'm just living in English, and that's powerful. Yep, so it's just another way of saying understanding like a native. That's it, all right? So if you would like to do this, if you would like to actually have me take you through this, uh, I have a program called Fluent for Life. And it is for people who know a lot of English, but still can't speak the way they would like to. And you can learn more about it by clicking on the link in the description once I put a link in the description, or you can just go back to uh, EnglishAnyone.com and you'll find a link to, uh, for Fluent for Life there. Uh, but if you'd like to learn more about the program, you can do that. Very simply, it's just helping you understand, like a native, about the things that you care about. So if you want to learn about business English, or about relationships or pets or you know fixing cars you know whatever your particular interest is this is what we do in fluent for life so it just helps you understand like a native automatically so you become a fluent speaker guaranteed if you'd like to learn more about that you can click on the link and if you have any questions about that i can hang around for a while uh, and uh, and answer some of those all right so let's see i take notes of everything i do in my daily routine in english yeah it's another thing What's your opinion on Duolingo? Now, I don't know much about Duolingo. I've never used it personally, but uh, the idea of it is like translating, <laughs> isn't it? It's like Duolingo. Why would you want to use one language to learn another language? I don't understand how that works. Now, if I'm incorrect about that, that's fine. Uh, but I, I don't know much about Duolingo. I never used Duolingo. Um, I know they, their marketing is good. <laughs> You know, they're, they're around places. They got a whole bunch of funding from Google. I know that. Uh, but 
in, if, if they are learning uh, or helping you learn English through your native language by translating, then they are probably hurting your progress. There might be some people who get fluent using that. They've got a lot of people using their system, I think. Um, but, I mean, the only guaranteed way to get fluent is just understanding like a native. And that's very easy to do. So that's what I do. All right, let's see here. That's funny. Sometimes I forget some word in my native language, but I can say it in English. That happens with you? Yeah, I, I forget English words sometimes. It happens. Uh, I like your English. It's very clear and easy to understand. With you, I can learn more English. Yep. So if you would like to learn more before my, my, my clear voice dies on me, uh, this is where you can get me all the time, anytime you like, and I will get you fluent automatically. So you don't need to have me there physically with you, but you can have me like this, explaining things and helping you understand the language like a native so you speak like one. All right, well, it looks like uh, I have a huge problem with articles. I have no idea how to use them. Yep, we cover uh, articles in Fluent for Life. And again, if you don't understand them like a native, then you won't use them like a native. So we help you understand them like a native. I don't believe that it is good to use my language to learn other language. Yes, so you should not be doing that. That was what I began with at the beginning of this video. I will make this video live so people can go back and watch it. But the, uh, the main point is that if you're learning through your native language, so if you're learning uh, English through Chinese or you're learning English through Japanese or something like that, you are hurting yourself. You are learning the language, but you're not learning to speak. All right, that's the difference. So if you really want to become a really good speaker, you have to understand the language like a native. You have to learn it all in English, get that naturally varied review. The naturally varied review is so important. And you will really not find that anywhere on YouTube because people are always trying to give you new information. Here's 10 new words to learn uh, about, you know, whatever. And it's like, okay, great, I learned some new words, but I can't use them, all right? It doesn't make any sense, <laughs> all right? All right, let's see here. Uh, so I appreciate your effort. I can't see the link you're talking about. Yes, I don't, I I'm just started this live video, uh, and I thought I could put a link in here, but it, I don't know how I can do that. But if you just go to English Anyone, English any, I'm going to have to write clearly, <laughs> oh no, anyone.com, uh, and then you will see a link for Fluent for Life in the menu up there. All right. Thoughts on shadowing? Uh, I mean, it's it, it, like little kids do that as well. It's, it's not like one, one specific technique you could use for speaking or something like that. You're repeating after people, but it's not, it's not speaking or repeating after people that gets you fluent. It's understanding that gets you fluent. Now, this should be a really exciting idea for people because you should think, wow, I don't need to speak. I don't need any embarrassing moments where I'm going out and trying to find people or it's a pain to, to locate a practice partner or schedule a time with someone. You don't need any of that. You just need to understand like a native. And this is what I help you do in Fluent for Life. So I will put a link up here uh, at some point when, when I can figure out how to do that. Uh, but for starters, just go to Fluent for Life or go to EnglishAnyone.com and you can learn more about the program there, all right? But if you have any questions, you can also send us an email at info at EnglishAnyone.com. But if you have been struggling for a long time, like I had, you know, struggling for over, you know, 10, 15 years to try to learn different languages, once I finally did this, the progress, very quick, all right? So I'd love to help do the same thing for you. It's really quick. You can actually start when you focus on something, you can become fluent in uh, the conversations that we cover in about 30 days. And so you're getting fluent in all these different things and very quickly building your overall fluency. All right, so maybe I'd like one last long time following your YouTube, learn English from you, many English teacher on YouTube, but I'm not really can get it. But with you, it's easy to understand, getting from Indonesia. Got it, thank you, Mr. Drew. I need, uh, speaking for, I need speaking for advanced level. Remember, uh, Manal, you probably have many basic errors in how you speak. But I cover advanced English, basic English. All of it is covered in Fluent for Life. All right. Well, I'm glad to see uh, everybody coming out. Thank you for joining me today. I didn't uh, tell anybody about this live. I just wanted to make it and put it out there for people uh, because I know people every day are still telling me oh, I'm, I'm struggling with my ability to speak. So this is it. Now, you could spend like... I don't know, $1,000, $2,000 or something to travel to the United States, or you could spend a lot less and get fluent for life. Think about it.
All right, have a fantastic day. I'm going to shut this down, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.